Greetings, welcome back to my channel. In this problem, we want to look at an assemblage of elements, some of which we're going to classify as rigid, and some of which we're going to classify as flexible. All right, so in this problem, we have a rigid, oops, let me get a better color. How about this one? We have a rigid member, A, B, C, D and it is pinned at D, and there is an applied force up at A. And our question is, is this structure statically determinate, statically indeterminate, or unstable? And unstable is kind of a structural engineering term. Um, in statics, you may have Instead of saying unstable, your professor might have said in motion. OK, all right. So in order to demonstrate what's going to happen, I am going to pop over to my SketchUp model here in my other window. And this is something you can do at home. So this blue element here, you can think of that as a um, popsicle stick. And let's say that you have a popsicle stick and you drill these four small holes in it. And you can even push holes in it with a push pin. And down here at A, that's the base, um, you could use that push pin analogy to push the this point. We want it to uh, be prevented or constrained from translating. So you could use a push pin to push through the bottom hole. You want to allow rotation. And in this model, I have that shown with these two kind of pinkish red looking plates. Then of course my applied force is up here all the way at the top and so I've just inserted a little peg, just a little kind of solid cylindrical peg right up at the top through my popsicle stick and I'm going to push on it with the direction of these forces. All right, so what is going to happen to this system is that when this force is applied this free or this body the popsicle stick being the body has no choice but to go into motion right so the only place where we can develop a reaction is at that pin connection and a structural engineer would say that this structure is unstable a mechanical engineer might say that this is a machine and it's been designed to rotate about this pin so the answer to our question is that this is an unstable structure. All right, how do we know that mathematically? Summation of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Summation of moments about any axis coming out of the page, z-axis, is equal to zero. And I think summing those moments about d is going to give us the most information in this particular problem. Let's apply our basic rules for free body diagrams. We want to free our structure or free our body from the support. Which I'll just put right over here. Okay. Now down here at our pin at D, we could possibly get an X direction reaction. We could possibly get a Y direction reaction, but we quickly see that there is absolutely no way to maintain static equilibrium because this force P is offset by that distance L and we do have rotation of our body. It is in motion specifically, it is rotating. All right, with that in mind, let's pan over to our next case study. Okay, so I'll pull this one over here. Let's pull up some explanation of what's going on. All right, we're just about ready to go. Okay, now member ABCD, it is still supported by that PIN pin connection down at D, but we have also attached a cable. Let's see how that's going to change our structure. If I go back into my SketchUp model, 
I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I have that one modeled over to the side. All right, so if you've got your popsicle sticks at home and want to build this, see I've got kind of two rubber bands that I've added into my assembly. And the rubber bands are stretched from this peg, which is connected to the popsicle stick. Okay, and then they're stretched over another peg in the background, but that peg is actually connected to a surface somehow. So if you wanted to build this at home, you would put your push pin here, one push pin there, one push pin down here. These other yellow nodes are just locations inside the popsicle stick. And what's going to happen here, my CAD model is not going to really show this accurately. So this will definitely rotate, but unlike the prior example in which we saw that free rotation, that instability, this one's going to move over just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to grab one other thing. I'm going to grab that pin as well. Give me just a second. So I need all this stuff. I need that, I need that, I need that. One more time. I need all this stuff, I need that. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna rotate that assemblage of elements about the center of that pin, okay? But this time, it's just gonna stretch that rubber band. How much is it, is it gonna stretch the rubber band? Well, it depends how much force is being put into the system. I'll just kind of rotate that over 10 degrees. And let's see if I can make this work without too much trouble. Yeah, not bad. Let's put that over there. Okay. So the one in the back isn't stretched, I'd have to manipulate that separately. But basically, we see that rubber band stretching in tension and holding the system in static equilibrium. I think it's a little easier to draw here than it is to fully model it. So let's do that. We pivot about D. There is our rigid member ABCD tilts like this. No D doesn't move, the other nodes do move. And look what happens to our cable. E doesn't move, but B stretches over here due to the applied force P. And so we get this large deformation in our rubber band, delta right there. Node B translates over to location B prime. A translates over to location A prime and C translates over to location C prime. Okay, let's do the free body diagram for this and answer this question. So hopefully the analysis by adding that rubber band, we are able to maintain static equilibrium. We're no longer unstable or in motion or in free rotation. And here's what that free body would look like. I'm just going to draw it down below here. Up at the top, I have my force P. I'm going to have a tensile force in the cable. I'm going to call this cable 1. And so I'll just call this normal force in cable 1, so in sub 1. Down at the bottom, I'm going to think about running force equilibrium in the x direction. And we see that that bottom um, reaction is going to have to go this way. We'll call that d sub x. Now, how do I know conclusively that it's going that way? Well, the best tool to do that is called qualitative equilibrium. And so I'm imagining this point up at the top and I'm doing a summation of moments about A is equal to zero. And as I think through this qualitative equilibrium equation, the force in sub one 
causes a negative or clockwise moment about A. Therefore, DX has to create a, a um, positive or counterclockwise moment about A. That's called qualitative equilibrium, and it is a super useful tool to know about when you want to determine um, the direction of reactions. Now, I know that some of you are looking at this and thinking, well, that's a PIN pin connection down below. How do you know that you don't have a D sub Y here? And the answer to that lies in the definition of a two force member. So cable number one is a two force member. It's often abbreviated 2FM, it's kind of silly, two force member. And essentially that refers to any member that is subjected only to internal tension like our cable or internal compression, which is not shown in this problem. But we know that these forces have to align to the longitudinal axis of the member. That's due to the definition of a two force member. Therefore, that's how we know that there is no X component here at B. So B, um, I'm sorry, Y, Y. So my B sub Y is equal to zero. And then D sub Y is equal to zero because there's nothing to balance that out. Okay, so there's only three non-zero reactions. We have our free body diagram. Now we do our tallying to determine if this is a determinate or indeterminate structure. So equations, let me get a better color. Equations of equilibrium. We have summation of forces in the x direction equals zero. We have summation of moments about any z-axis is equal to zero. My unknowns, I have two. My normal force in sub one is unknown. Dx is unknown. So I can evaluate my degree of indeterminacy by taking two unknowns subtract out two equations of equilibrium, get a degree of indeterminacy of zero, and that's what we call a statically indeterminate structure. Degree of indeterminacy equals zero. All right, let's see what happens. So let's see what happens in the SketchUp model when we add another support. that one modeled over here. All right, so we've still got the force at the top. We've still got the pin or the push pin down here at the bottom, but now I've got one, two, three push pins and two rubber bands. I'll call the top one cable one. I'll call the bottom one table two. What's gonna happen? Well, all of this stuff is gonna rotate about this bottom pin make that go 10 degrees. And these cables will just stretch and stay connected. We'll get that elongation. That's close enough for what we're trying to show here. I won't model all four, but you kind of get the point here that all four of those rubber bands would stay connected to the popsicle stick and you get stretching or deformation, elongation in those rubber bands. All right, let's go back into the 2D world and I will pan over to our final part of the problem. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Let's add my last problem statement and pull it over so you can see it. Okay, that's looking good. All right. Now we have member ABCD now supported by the pin of D and by two cables. We'll sketch that deformed shape. I'll do that. Just directly draw on top because it's an easy thing to do. 
A moves to A prime, B moves to B prime, C moves to C prime. We will use small angle theory. And what that means is that we're going to assume that that translation between B and B prime only has a horizontal or x direction component. Nothing's going on in the y directions, OK? That's just a geometric simplification, a geometric approximation that is good enough for our purposes and lets us apply small angle theory. All right. Let's do our, um, our tally analysis. And this problem similar than the others, but to the other one, but let's go ahead and draw the free body to make sure that everything is crystal, crystal clear. Now, we almost always in this class draw our free bodies in the undeformed geometry. There will be an exception to that rule a little bit later. That will be for deriving the column buckling equation. But here, let's draw this in the undeformed geometry and do a free body diagram. So we got a P force at the top. We have a tension in cable one. That is a pulling force, so arrow pointed away from the body. Tension in cable two, that is a pulling force, arrow pointed away from the body. And then down at D, just as before, we need a, a reaction down here. I'll call this D sub X. And those are our only unknowns. So for unknowns, we have three. And those three are N sub one, N sub two, and D sub X. We know from the prior analysis that there are no Y direction reactions in the system. How do we know that? We know all about two force members. Cable one is a two force member. Cable two is a two force member. P is input into the system. So that's known or given or the load. That's the demand. And these are the outputs or the reactions into the system. We have three unknowns. All right. How many equations of equilibrium do we have? Just as before, we have summation of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. And we have summation of moments about any z axis equals zero. That is two equations. Three minus two equals one. That is my degree of indeterminacy. So the answer to this problem is that we are statically indeterminate to the first degree. We will need to write a deformation compatibility equation in order. to solve for our unknowns. OK, I'm going to pull all of this stuff over to the side. We're done with that for now. The one thing that I want to do left is I want to derive that deformation compatibility equation. The key to doing that is to come in here and zoom in and note that this distance from B to B prime, that is the change in length of cable one. What symbol do we give change in length? That's deformation, subscript one for cable one. Do you see how cable two deforms far less due to the geometry of the problem? Go ahead and put that in the drawing too. That is my delta two. Now, my deformation compatibility equation is going to be some mathematical relationship that I see between the deformations in the problem. I'm going to want to use similar triangles here. And the similar triangles that I'm going to want to use look like this. I am going to have one triangle that is big like this. I'll just tune down, turn down the volume so we can see that OK. And then I'm going to have another triangle. I'll do this one in a green color. That is smaller like that. OK, so here is my big triangle, the yellow one. It has. Okay. 
the big triangle has this dimension. And again, this is a right triangle right there. That dimension is equal to 2L. And the green triangle, that one has a dimension of L. Let me put that on the correct layer so it won't go away here in a minute. Okay, I'll keep both of those colored triangles there, but I'll make them kind of fade into the background just a little bit more. I'll fade that as well and give us a nice fresh layer on top. Okay, so let's do our similar triangles. So I'm going to look at the big yellow triangle first and say delta 1 is to 2L and then look at the green triangle as delta 2 is to L. Delta 1 is to 2L as delta 2 is to L. Multiply this by 2L, get rid of that there. You can do some cancellation. And we can set up a relationship. Delta 1 equals twice delta 2 or delta 2 equals half delta 1. Okay, does that make sense by looking at the picture? Does delta 1 look to be twice delta 2? Yep, it sure does, so that makes good sense. Now, if you wanted to complete this problem, the next step would be taking each one of these deltas and expanding them using the definition of axial deformation in L over AE. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.